Welcome to my channel where I share trading advice for average Joes. I talk about trading from home, money management, these types of things. So if that's something of interest to you, then please hit the subscribe button below. Today, uh, first of all, I want to just apologize for the, the video quality. The reason it's so bad, I'm just on my laptop. We're going to do a quick screen share and I'm going to run through the platform that I use for buying and selling shares and making most of my investments. Uh, this certainly isn't going to be an advanced tutorial. It says lots and lots of things on the platform, lots of elements that I don't use, I don't need to use and you probably won't need to use yourself. Um, but it's going to be perfect for anyone who just wants to start buying a few stocks here and there. I won't be focusing on options, futures, that kind of thing. It's purely for the buying and selling of shares. And I really want to point out, first of all, that when I started with this platform, I had zero experience. I had never bought a single share and it was very quick, very easy to pick up. So if that sounds like the position that you're in, um, then stick with me for the rest of the video. It, you really pick this one up very quickly. So the platform that I use for investing is called DeGiro. This is the home screen for DeGiro. It's an online brokerage based out of the Netherlands, very, very popular with home traders across Europe. First things first, first thing to ask, is it secure? Yes, is the answer. Um, it's regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority in the UK and the Financial uh, Markets Authority, I think they're called, in the Netherlands. So plenty of safeguards in place to make sure that your money is kept safely and securely. Um, as it's a European brokerage as well, it's also covered by the investor compensation scheme up to 20,000 euros. Um, this isn't something you really have to worry about, but it's something, a nice little safety net to know that's there. Um, essentially, it means if those safeguards were to fail and the company was to fail, you're covered up to the value of 20,000 euros for your investments. For that reason, I tend to keep my uh, investment, my balance at around that figure, maybe just over, maybe just under, but I try not to exceed it too much just in case you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. Um, you will need to register for an account with the gyro. You do that on the top right hand side of the screen, open an account. Um, you have to go for a process for this as well. So they're going to ask you for ID. They're going to ask you for proof of address and they're going to ask you to link a bank account to your trading account. Uh, this takes a few days to go through that process, um, but it's all pretty standard stuff. In fact, it's things that you want to see anyway in any trading platform. If you ever went to a, a website or download an app that didn't ask for those kind of things um, that would be ringing some alarm bells for me so go through that process open your account and once you have done that you'll be able to log in to your home screen so this is what my home screen looks like yours will look very similar the numbers may be slightly different um, on this page the tabs down the left hand side these are what I'm going to run through the market is your home page that's the screen we're on now um, along the top edge there you can see the balance 19,190 that's uh, your total balance everything you have in your trading account it's made up of the portfolio 17,621 that's the value of all your investments plus the amount you have sat in your money market fund. Money market fund essentially is your cash balance. Maybe you've sold some shares or you've transferred some money into your account and it sits there before you invest it. The total of those two will give you the total balance. Um, on the top edge there in green as well, in green at the moment because it's been a positive day, you have your daily results, so 661 pound up for the day um, that makes up the, the the numbers there on the right hand side you have deposit or withdraw this is obviously where you can add funds to your account or remove funds from your account just one thing to know if you do or when you do deposit funds to your account it takes a few days it's not instant you have to make a transfer from your designated bank account into the DeGiro bank account um, they will provide you all the details on there but just give yourself a little bit of time it takes two or three days before it shows up in your account 
Below this, you have the different markets, UK market, the FTSE European markets, US markets. There are no Asian markets on here, um, but quite useful this for how well, just an overview of how well it's performed for the day. The FTSE, for example, today up 3.13%, so it's had a good day. Below that, you can then look at the charts and you can amend the charts if you want to look at the one week view or the one month view, the three month, all the way up to five years and beyond that actually. Um, so again, a useful little tool there. To the right hand side, winners and losers, you can tab down and change this to whichever market you want to view. I tend to have it on the FTSE um, and this is going to show you who's been doing well that day, who's performed well in that day, and who's performed very badly as well. All the big movers are shown on that screen. Scroll down a little bit, and again on the right-hand side, you have stocks to watch. Stocks to watch, if I hover over the question mark, it will tell you what it's made up of, but essentially anything that's making the news headlines, anything that's being traded in really high, high volumes is gonna show in there. And on the left hand side, you have the news headlines there. Okay, I don't tend to use this too much for the news because it doesn't update that often. The same headlines have been showing there all day, so you're probably better off using BBC News business pages or Yahoo Finance, that kind of thing, for more up to date information. Final thing on this screen at the bottom currency fluctuation. So it tells you how different currencies have been performing. Again, something to keep an eye on. Sometimes you'll go, I don't know, you'll have all your shares held in US dollars um, and you've made a 1% profit for that day. But when you actually look at your account, there's no extra money in there. That's because uh, unfortunately the currency's moved against you. So it's something to keep an eye on as well, um, but all displayed on that home screen on the market page. The next tab, favorites. Your favorite screen is gonna bring up any stocks or any products, for me it's just stocks, that's all I invest in, um, that you have marked with the favorite star. If you click on the blue star next to any product, it will keep them as a favorite and load them onto this screen. It shows you the name of the products, it shows you what type of product they are, the market that they are listed on, and then a mid-market price. Next to the mid-market price, you'll find the bid, and the ask price. Now this is something you really want to understand. A bid price is for sellers. If you're selling a share, you want to be looking at the bid price. It is the maximum price that a buyer is willing to pay for that share. And then the ask price is what the buyers want to look at. It is the mini minimum price um, that a seller is willing to sell their shares for so take a little bit of time to get your head around the different terminology the page will also show you the movement of different shares um, in points value and then in percentage terms as well as well as the volume traded the daily lows and the daily highs that's your favorites page i'm going to move on to portfolio Portfolio is where all your shares are going to be held. Any investments you've made are going to be detailed in here. Again, similar kind of setup, the name of the shares, how many you hold, the price in the currency of the share. So some of them are in US dollars, some in pounds, some in euros, depending on where they've been purchased from. But then to the right hand side, you've always got the value in pounds. It will convert it back to you. And if you want to rearrange this in any way, you can click on the value, for example, and it will order them in terms of the highest value stocks or your highest value holding, okay? I tend to keep it as alphabetical order, um, but however you like to view it. Again, the profit or loss in um, monetary terms for the day, in percentage terms, and then profits towards the end here. Next up, the activity tab. The activity page, the outstanding tab, would show you any transactions 
that were outstanding at the moment. I haven't made any orders today, so there's nothing showing in there, but this is where you would find them until they've been executed. Once they've been executed, they then move to the history tab. If I just date range this one a little bit, it will show you trades that I've been making, buys, sales, all detailed in here, the amount, the quantity. This page is gonna be very useful probably your account statement page, more useful um, for when you need to submit a tax return. When you have to report on your taxes, this is where you're gonna find your profits, your losses. This is where it can all be calculated from. It also gives details of any, any fees that you've had to pay. Okay, so very useful, this one. Final page, products. Now, I don't tend to use this page. You can find details of shares, bonds, investment funds, ETFs, etc., all in here. The reason I don't use it is because on every page, even on your home page, in the top left, you have the search function. Now, you can use this search function to search for any company. Let's look for PepsiCo, for example. It's not one that I hold, but very popular. PepsiCo, if you click on the name, it will then take you into that stock, into its performance. Again, you've got the usual charts for the day, the week, the month. You have its performance for the day up 0.52%. And then on the right-hand side, the bid and the ask price as to whether you're buying or selling. Um, if you do want to buy shares in PepsiCo, let's have a little look. You click on the buy button and it will bring up ways to make orders. Just be aware there's a number of different ways you can place an order here. A limit order will allow you to set a price. So it's $133 at the moment. Let's say you want to pay $132 and you want to buy 10 shares. You can enter that information there. If you click on place order, if the price drops down to $132 per share, it will then execute, execute that trade for you. Okay, so you are setting the limit. Just note that the it obviously doesn't add up there. It shows 1059 That amount is in pounds. So that is showing me the effect that it's going to have on my available to trade balance. It's going to take £1,000 out of the account. Okay. Um, the next, sorry, just at the bottom there, you can select day order or GTC. A day order would stay valid until executed or the end of that trading day. If it hasn't happened, uh, by the end of the day, it's going to disappear. It's going to cancel itself off. If you do G to C, which stands for good till cancelled, it will stay on the system until it's either executed or you remove it. Okay, so those are your two options at the bottom. The next type of order you can make is a market order. A market order if you just want to buy the share and you're not bothered about what price you pay for it. You just select in here, I want 10 shares in PepsiCo. Um, again, same selections at the bottom, either of those. Place order and it will buy them, providing there is someone willing to sell, providing there is liquidity in the market, which there always tends to be for these big companies, um, then it will buy them at whatever price they are available for. So if you're not bothered about what price you're paying and you just want that stock, that's probably the option you'll use. And then at the bottom, you have stop loss and stop limit. You're probably not going to use these two. Stop loss, essentially, if you wake up in the morning and you have a look at your account um, and then you go off to work, you could use these features. Stop loss, for example, you could calculate what a 10% loss is and say, I don't want to lose more than 10% on this. Pop in $121 or whatever that. 10% loss might be how many you want to sell in this case um, and then it would sell them for you should the price go that low likewise you can do it the other way around you can do it as a stop limit um, it's exactly the same principle if you want to sell whenever it makes a 10% gain you can set it up to do that but most likely you'll be using limit and you'll be using market the other two, most likely, I, I don't think you will, okay? Um, that's how you buy. Final thing I'm gonna show you, the fee schedule. So the fee schedule here, uh, I tend to buy from the London Stock Exchange and uh, the US markets. The fees are very low. So London Stock Exchange, £1.75 plus 0.014%. 
and then the US markets 0.5 euros plus 0.004 per share. The fees with the gyro are very low. I think in all my time of, of using the platform, my highest fee has been $5, $6, something like this. So it's not going to cost you an absolute fortune. Okay. That's it, guys. A quick walkthrough of the, the Gyro platform. I hope you found it useful. If you're a new trader or you want to start trading, then it's definitely something that I recommend. Like I said, I had no experience trading. I managed just fine. So I would say it's perfect for beginners. I am going to post a separate video going into more detail on what makes up my full portfolio and why. So if you're keen, then make sure you hit the subscribe button.